Hello everyone and welcome back to the only series out there that combines the lore of Magic the Gathering with the physical cards you can win. I'm Simon and this is Friday Night Lore. Greetings again Vorthos Army and welcome back to FNL. We'll be returning to Innistrad after our short break meandering down Eternal Master's Lane. While I love the older stories, and surely I'll be covering more in the future, I feel a sense of relief going back to the unfinished story of Innistrad. Now, let's jump right into things as we go over what's happening to Magic's new planeswalker, the werewolf Arlen Kord. From where we left off, little was known about Kord and her backstory, but the madness enveloping Innistrad is enough to trigger long-lasting memories. It starts with the strong scent of Angel's blood. It's a scent she smelled before long ago, but now it was becoming more common. The angels themselves have been driven mad, attacking those who they once protected. With the death of their Archangel Avacyn, it seems the holy light of these angelic beings has been snuffed out for good. Kord hears a commotion occurring in a small town near her wooded territory known as the Ulvenwald. The werewolf planeswalker has, for years, regarded this forest as her home and under her ultimate protection. All innocents were safe in her presence, even humans. Humans who would cower in fear at just the sight of her. Kord couldn't blame them. In her eyes, she was a monster. Another werewolf coming to slaughter their loved ones in the night. But Kord was a different species altogether. Regardless of their interpretation of her, Kord made a vow. She would protect these people from the angels seeking to slaughter them. As she races to save those who could never truly understand, she hears the bellow of a Cathar's horn, a trigger to a memory long past. She was just old enough to hold a blade, but she remembers it fondly. The night she became a member of Avacyn's church, an archmage of Gold Knight. She had trained for such a long time, practicing amongst the order, learning the prayers and doing the work. Tonight, in a long time past, Arlene Cord would be handed the mantle of Archmage. This is what she's wanted for the majority of her life, ever since the change. Ever since those dreaded Mondronan werewolves came to her town and cursed all that she loved, cursed her. Since she participated in her first hunt with the pack, Cord has rebuked her new form. She's done everything in her power to curb the transformations, prayers, holy wards, but they only seem to quell the unease, not cure it outright. This is why she started her journey to become a member of the Gold Knight, an order of Avicinian mages meant to protect the people of Innistrad. Cord figured if she truly devoted herself to the great Avicen, give herself to the angel fully, the power of her light would rid her of this curse. During the ceremony where Cord would receive her robes, she knelt beside Archmage Rembert, the man who's been guiding her all this time. He saw something in Cord, a goodness rare in most people. She was born to be a gold knight, yet even he was unaware of her affliction. She hid it well, for a werewolf would never receive such a blessing from Avicen. Just as the robes were about to be cast upon Cord's back, a Cathar burst through the door asking for aid. Devils were attacking a nearby town and the angels had requested the Gold Knight's assistance. Even with the ceremony incomplete, their duty called. As Cord and her mentor, Rambert, ran to the disturbance, they spoke the words and said the prayer. She had finally become an Archmage. The light of Avacyn filled her from within. She felt great joy, as if this would be the first day of a new life. They arrived on the scene. Devils, little horrid creatures who cackled at the sight of suffering, were everywhere. They had slaughtered the innocent people here and set fire to anything that would burn. They danced in the streets and tortured the barely living. They needed to be stopped. The angels already there had prepared a church and blessed it in protective light, creating a sanctuary for those who survived. Cord and the others were tasked with finding those survivors and guiding them to safety. Cord happened across a young boy cowering beneath a burning carriage. Above him was an angel, repelling a band of devils from finishing the child off. The angel had her hands full. The small monsters were hacking and clawing at her skin, drawing angelic blood with their needle-sharp claws. Yet, her presence stood strong, commanding Archmage Cord to get the child to safety. She did as she was bid, convincing the child out from his precarious position and coming with her to the sanctuary. Yet. As they left, the angel who guarded them was set upon by a horde of these devils, causing her to cry out in pain. Cord covered the child's ears and said a prayer. It was all she could do. With that, Arlene Cord snapped back to reality, her in her monstrous form running to stop a mad angel from slaughtering an entire village. She looked up to find where her nose and feet had taken her, an outcropping in the middle of the forest. 
The scent was true, the angel was here now, but bound by ropes and surrounded by militant Cathars. The humans of the former church had cast the powerful angel down. Now Kord watched and waited. She knew the true power of angels, a power most humans didn't understand. At any moment, this mad protector could shrug off her restraints and kill them all. This humble monster stood by in the shadows to ensure that didn't happen. As she watched, a voice echoed through the trees. It was strong and familiar. Kord couldn't believe her honed eyes. It was the Archmage Rembert. He had lived through all this madness. His command was still firm. He ordered the Cathars to tighten the ropes, knowing just what angels were capable of. Seeing her old mentor caused Kord to stumble back. At that instance, she was more human than beast, losing the iconic balance of her wolf form. She backpedaled and snapped a branch in two with a loud crack, a sound that grabbed the attention of the angel. It called out in sheer madness, there in the woods, a monster, causing the Cathars to lose focus. In that moment, the angel lunged upwards, loosening her restraints and flying freely once again. Rembert took charge, looking squarely into Kord's eyes, ordering his men to kill the monster. This wasn't her fight, however. Her fight was with the angel who cackled like the devils did so many years ago. She leaped from the woods and hurled herself into the air towards the mad angel, but her teeth found only the wooden stick wielded by Rembrandt as a weapon. He continued his attack on the werewolf, swinging his club mercilessly. Kord could have taken a thousand of these blows without so much as feeling it, but she wouldn't harm this man. None of them. She wanted nothing more than to tell him to stop, that she wasn't the monster he thought she was. But all that came to her was more memories. Like that, Kord was transported through thoughts back to the burning village infested with devils. She had safely brought the boy to the sanctuary. Now it was time to return to the field and save the angel she had left behind. The angel was in serious trouble. She had been overrun by these monsters. Kord immediately drew her blade and hacked at several who were perched on the angel's back. Her training as a warrior left her well prepared to deal with these little abominations, but what they lacked in size, they made up for in sheer numbers. As soon as Kord showed herself as a threat, more of the devils leaped onto her from the rooftops. Now her and the angel were covered in devils, hacking and slashing, drawing blood and spear alike. The pain and frustration built within Kord's very soul, releasing the power she had hid all this time. A power she hoped becoming an archmage would cure. As Kord burst forth from her imprisonment of devil bodies, the beast that stood was nothing but the embodiment of ferocity. She cut her way through the little troublemakers as if they were made of paper, tearing them apart with ease. Finally, the werewolf made it to the angel and swatted the devils off of her, biting and clawing indiscriminately. While most of her strikes found devil flesh, one bite found itself into the sweet flesh of the angel. The blood poured into her mouth with a taste more beautiful than anything she could ever imagine. Her bloodlust was freed. She tore into the angel like it was a deer ready for consumption. Kord was stopped by a Cathar who stumbled onto the horrific scene, shouting at the monster to halt, her bloodlust yet not sated. She tore into the human with little effort, and as more came to his aid, she cut them down as well. One after another, Cathars and Archmages fell to her ferocity. Finally, one shouted her name, Arlen. It was Archmage Rembert, recognizing his pupil from the Gold Knight necklace she still wore around her beastly neck. The name puzzled the monster's mind. Regardless, she slashed at the man's face, causing deep gashes to form. Rembert looked around through the blood pouring down his face. His friends, his fellow Cathars were all dead, and it was all the fault of this monster, Arlen Kord. He took his sword and slashed at the werewolf, barely missing. All throughout, the beast's mind shattered. It went between its natural instincts and the thoughts of Arlene Kord. Eventually, the pain of her actions became too much. She had given up on this life. She was ready to let Rembert exact his revenge. She deserved to die. But as the glint of his steel passed through her abdomen, Arlen Kord disappeared. This was the ignition of her planeswalker spark, throwing her from danger to a far off distant world. In the woods of an unknown plane, Kord was locked in her werewolf form, yet still obtained her human memories, thoughts, feelings, and actions. She wouldn't return to Innistrad for several years, but once she had, she gained full control over her abilities. The beast was no longer at war with the human inside her. She was both in perfect harmony. She could transform at will and was always in control. This is who she really was, who she's always been. She was flung back to the here and now, 
facing the man who had once believed in her, but now saw nothing more than a monster, not knowing of her newfound control. He commanded his men to fall in, kill the monster in front of them, while he completely ignored the mad angel floating just to their rear. Before anyone could make a move, the angel swooped down and grabbed Archmage Rambart by the shoulders, hoisting him high into the air. On instinct alone, Kord jumped over the Cathars and bit deep into the angel's leg, forcing her to release Rambert and fall to the ground. Within moments of hitting the soft forest floor, Kord pounced on the angel and finished it off as it laughed in the night. She turned to face what she thought would be aggressive Cathars, but no one was there. Rembert had been dropped off near the edge of a cliff and now hung loosely for his life. The other men couldn't reach him, but Arlen raced through, still in wolf form, to help her former friend. Rembert refused to take her hand. She had lied to him, slaughtered her men. This was all true, but as Kord reverted back to her human form, she told him that Avison was dead. They must put their faith into something else. We must find strength in each other. And that, guys, was the latest story from our return to Innistrad. We finally get a better look into the backstory of Arlen Kord and a hint at where her story may be heading. She will probably form a relationship with these human protectors against the Mad Angels, building a connection between them and the werewolves she represents. But have things gotten so bad on Innistrad that humans will now turn to werewolves for help? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's Friday Night Lore. As with all FNLs, it's time to announce the giveaway card of the week. Without question, I'm giving away a copy of Arlene Cord, the new planeswalker from Shadows Over Innistrad. To enter for your chance to win, all you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel and leave a comment on this video. At the end of the week, I'll unveil the winner in the next FNL. If you haven't already, consider following me on Twitter. It's the easiest way for me to announce winners and to get in contact with you guys. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving a like and subbing to the channel. It goes a long way in supporting future content. You can also support this channel on Patreon. Becoming a patron means you'll directly fund my videos, while also being entered into monthly giveaways for prizes like cards, fat packs, and entire booster boxes. If that sounds interesting, check out my Patreon page linked in the description below. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.